my fellow readers, today I'm going to be talking about a series that I just finished and I absolutely loved, and that is Cheese Sweet Home. And it's right beside me. I have the complete collection, the huge box set. Um, I think each of these were like three in ones, and it was massive, but it's so quick of a read. Um, the series is by Konami Kanata, and let me just pull this out. It tells the story of Chi, the main character here. Um, Chi is a little gray and white kitten, and um, I will say I did not expect to get as emotional about this story as I did. Um, by the end, there might have been tears. <laughs> so essentially the beginning of Chi's Sweet Home she, little baby kitten, is out with her mama cat and um, her two siblings, and they're on a walk, and she gets a bit distracted because she's a little kitten, and that's what they do, and gets separated from her mother and siblings and can't find them. So she gets lost and tries searching and ends up giving up and flopping on this grass, and um, around that same time, a, a little boy, I think he's about three, uh, flops down on the grass. I don't remember if he tripped or not, and so they're like, they meet. Um, and he immediately becomes kind of attached to Chi. Um, his mother, I don't think his dad was there. Yeah. His mother decides to pick baby Chi up um, she didn't have a name at that time, just a little bit kitten. She decides to pick the kitten up and take the kitten home with her instead of leaving her alone in the grass. When she wakes up, um, one, she's shocked. Two, um, she is determined to get home to her mother, so she wants to leave the um, apartment so that she can go home but she keeps getting distracted by other things because she's a kitten and she doesn't have a good attention span. And so little by little, um, she forgets her cat mom and her cat family and attaches herself to the little boy Yohei, you know, as her brother, um, and to Yohei's mommy and daddy, who she just calls mommy and daddy, um, in her mind, because she's a cat. And so, it was kind of rough because, one, the opening, you, you feel really bad for her because she keeps thinking about her mom and how she wants to get home to her mom, and it that it really is um, emotional, even though she's a cat. Um, there are, you know, emotions brought up behind it, you know, where she'll remember snuggling with her mama as she's, like, cuddling something else. And then just the the fact that her memory would go and she would forget that over time, which, you know, I, I guess that's what actually happens because so many cats, you know, you end up leaving your your cat family <laughs> and, and among a people family. The rest of the adventures are mostly really charming. Um, Yohei and his family live in an apartment that doesn't accept pets. So part of it is them trying to hide Chi from the super. Uh, they do end up calling her Chi, which has to do with bathroom issues. It's really funny. Um, Chi... I don't know. I, I guess it gets to meet other animals. There's a big black cat that sort of um, has been also living at the apartment complex, even though he's not supposed to be there. Um, who befriends Chi and sort of teaches her about being a cat. Um, and then eventually um, Chi's family does end up moving. Um, and I think what also is touching is in the background, you do still get to see Chi's cat mom. And um, Chi's cat mom is looking for Chi. Uh, and it's kind of... <laughs> So kind of, it is very, like, emotional. Um, one of the things that I thought was weird, though, and drove me kind of crazy is by, I think, the last volumes, 
uh, they changed the spelling for mama and I don't I don't know why there's that inconsistency because they were all published by vertical comics um, but this uses the very traditional like child spelling for mama the m-a-m-a and then by like the last volume it's m-o-m-m-a and that was just distracting for me but maybe because i noticed like grammar and <laughs> spelling issues and i was just like that's not how they did it um overall though this is a very quick read it's a charming read it's something that you can read to just relax and feel better um you'll giggle at what she does and just how cute she is and she makes like really really cute faces i don't know i just i love chi um she reminded me of so many cats that i've had in the course of my life um I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. It is kind of fun too because in the in the back you'll get some of the Fuku Fuku comics. So this is another cat series that the author did. Um, I don't know what else to say. Um, this complete collection, little box set, which is really nice. I like the colors and uh, I like the chipboard board box. I like chi all over it but it also came with um, stickers which I I love these but I also don't want to use them because they're so cute <laughs> that was a lot of sets um, now I have not picked up chi sweet just sweet, Chia Sweet Adventures. Um, because somebody... Okay, what's interesting about Chia Sweet Adventures, which I think is based on the anime, is that this is not by the original creator, uh, and that's why it says created by Konami Kanata, adapted by Kinoko Natsume. And somebody had said that a lot of the story is just... Um, like a redo of the original story. So I don't know... That I'm going to pick up Chia Sweet Adventures. I did, however, pick up because I wanted more cute cat comics, uh, Fuku Fuku Kitten Tales. So I liked meeting Fuku Fuku in Chia Sweet Home and decided to pick up Fuku Fuku's Kitten Tales. So it's super cute. Another cat book tale. And also, I have arriving pretty soon, maybe even today. Um, Sue and Tai Chen. I'll be getting volumes one and two today, and then volume three is out in July. And I'm very excited because I really enjoyed these stinking cattails. They're adorable. Um, I don't know. Like I said, you don't have to put too much thought into it. If you're an animal lover like I am, then a lot of the stories just seem familiar. Even when she um, meets like dogs and how the dog and the cat interact, I've seen it my whole life and I love it. It's just comforting to me to read stories like this. Um, and there wasn't too much high drama. Like I said, there might have been a little bit of tears. <laughs> um, and just the whole baby Chi missing her mommy and, well, her mama, because mommy is Yohei's mommy. Um, and that that way of forgetting but then at the end too when characters are reintroduced and stuff happens and I'm not going to spoil any of that but it may have made me a little bit emotional and I love that it did that though um the fact that you do get invested with this character and you're not sure what is best for Chi um you know either way Chi wouldn't have a terrible life if she met back with her mommy cat. Her mommy cat obviously has a good cat life. She uh, has an owner, you know, um, but she has grown to love her people family. Mommy, daddy, and Yohei love her and they play and they take good care of she. Make sure she goes to the vet. They make sure that she doesn't get exposed to plants that she shouldn't be. 
um, that she's eating the right foods. So, I mean, she can't really go wrong, but it's that, like, pull between the two that's a little bit heartbreaking. On top of that, I think it's in volume two. Um, yeah, it's not in volume one. I believe it's in volume two. Um, and she actually meets a little kitten, Kochi, and Kochi is a stray. Um, Kochi and his litter mates were left in this box, um, just out in the park, like outside of the park. I think there's a little, like, nature spot, little woods. Like, people must play there, but they weren't in, like, the direct play area. It's like the grassy area. They were left in a little box. And his litter mates were picked up and taken home, but Kochi was left there. So Kochi is a stray. And just seeing this little kitten, and like, he's adapted to where he's fine, like having his own time. He knows where to go and get food. He knows that his box smells of his litter mates, but there is a whole story there too that's very touching, um, especially as he sees like, she navigate her family situation, and it makes him wonder about his. That it's just it's a little bit emotionally charged. Um, plus, I hate the idea of animals being um, abandoned or mistreated. It's actually how I've ended up with <laughs> most of the cats. No, all. I think all of the cats in my life. Um, were cats that were rescued. Um, I've never, I've never paid for a cat. Um, and that kind of thing does make me sad because one, spay and neuter your animals so that they don't overpopulate if you can. Um, or, you know, if you can keep them away from other animals, but if you're going to let them out, please do so responsibly. Um, that makes me really sad. <laughs> Just, it doesn't help anybody to have more of them out if they're going to be mistreated or hit and run. Um, I could get out a whole soapbox about that, but it just makes me sad. What's interesting is my cat that I own now, we think was actually given to us by his mother. Um, <laughs> Pretty sure we know his mother cat who used to live next door. She might not be alive anymore because it's been um, Many years since one we've seen her but two since my cat was born um, But we discovered him one day we had we had cats that would be like Indoors outdoors, so they had an area on the porch where they had cat beds and food and um, They were all fixed so they were never going to populate and create more cats. And though they were all rescued too. Their mother came to us and um, had kittens. It was already too late. Like, we didn't own her. She found us already pregnant. And we kept her babies around. Um, and this was many years ago, so many of them are no longer uh, with us anymore either, which is very sad. But anyway, we had that space for them. They were all grown cats by that time. And, um, Suddenly there was a little kitten left in like the cat bed area mewing <laughs> consistently and uh, yeah, he was discovered and and adopted and a lot of those stories remind me uh, of him and also our kittens that we raised from the mama cat that found us and yeah, I just I do love animals and making sure they're well cared for. Um, so I really enjoyed G Sweet Home. <laughs> it was just such a sweet, charming tale. I loved it. Um, would recommend it to anybody. I love that it's safe for readers of all ages. Um, G Sweet Home was published in a seinen magazine, which means for older male readers, but um, that doesn't mean that you only have to be an older male reader. There's a lot of appeal for um, children, for uh, teens, adults, anybody. Literally anybody can enjoy Cheese Sweet Home. Um, as long as you have an interest in animals, like if you have no interest in animals whatsoever, might not appeal to you. But um, yeah, if, if you want to see little kitten antics, uh, Cheese Sweet Home. And 
if you love that, and especially if you get this set, I don't know if the reg I don't know one if the original publication is still out. I'm guessing they all had the Fuku Fuku at the end, but I could be mistaken. Um, but if you fall in love with Fuku Fuku as well, you can get the full Fuku Fuku Kitten Tales and learn more about Fuku Fuku. Um, yeah, and then I can't wait to read the next one. <laughs> I'm enjoying these cat stories, and they're all so cute. I wish I could have like a cat of every kind. I am actually can't like have. I can't. I can't have it. I'm actually allergic to cats and dogs, but <laughs> but it's something that I put up with because I love them. Usually, it just involves uh, not staying too close. My sleeping area they cannot be allowed in, and uh, I wash my hands after petting them. I have to get rid of the fur, but um. I'll put up with that because I love them and their antics and I think they make life better and they're calming so that's enough of that <laughs> so check out Cheese Sweet Home if you want to I'm definitely going to check out the anime for Cheese Sweet Home I can't remember if it's still on Crunchyroll or if I have to watch it on Prime either way I have both so I don't care um, I'm going to check it out that is it for this video. Until next time, bye.